I love stack stacks. I even made a whole video about it here. But I understand that denying mana as a resource is very powerful and can sometimes require specific answers. Also, most players don't know how to play around stacks pieces. So if you're like me and you love stacks, but you don't want all the social contract baggage that comes with it, Group Slug might be the deck of choice for you. And it also might be the choice for you if you're a fan of Burn. But before I talk about Group Slug, if you like my videos, consider subscribing. Thanks. Okay, so what is a Group Slug deck? Basically, it's what you play if your playgroup isn't ready for stacks. I'm kidding. I think the two archetypes get conflated a lot because they do have some overlapping cards and styles, but there are some key differences. Group Slug plays cards that punishes all players, and then makes it so your punishment is less than your opponent's. This way you get more value. Stacks is really just resource denial, and you make it so that the resource denial cards don't hurt you as much as it hurts your opponent's. Stack stacks will destroy lands or force them not to untap, and try and lock people out of the game that way. Whereas a group slug deck is really more about punishing players and slowly burning them out. Although they have similarities, I really think Group Slug is a lot more like Burn than anything else. Group Slug is also primarily in Rakdos colors. Here are some classic slug cards. Mana Barbs and Painful Quandary. Mana Barbs and its cousins all punish players for tapping lands for mana. It doesn't stop you from using your lands or make you lose the mana, it just hurts when you do. And Painful Quandary doesn't stop players from casting spells, it just makes it more painful to do so. Discard effects are a common sub-theme in slug decks. Cards like Sire of Insanity or Waste Knot can be great additions in any group slug deck. Okay, so we have some burn and discard and you're probably in Rakdos colors. What are we doing with that? I think one of the strengths of group slug decks is the power of parity breaking. Certain cards are balanced around the fact that they affect all players equally. And one thing that I personally really like about stacks is looking at cards like Yakel Hops and saying, what do you do with this? If it affects everyone equally, how do we get any benefit? So turning back to Group Slug, with red cards like Mana Barbs and the likes, you can play cards that increase the damage dealt to your opponents. Or with something like Sire of Insanity, how do we benefit? You would play it in a deck that has no counter magic, lots of impulse draw instead of regular card draw, reanimation spells to help you get back creatures that you discard, and if you're feeling spicy, some hellbent cards. And then those cards that are supposed to be fair by affecting all players symmetrically are broken, and you get to unlock their full potential. This sounds all well and good, but what are some weaknesses of Group Slug? So unlike stacks where once they get their lockdown, you can actually 3v1, but Group Slug does not have that ability. Without resource denial, the deck is just not as powerful as stacks. But a lot of the cards that I've talked about and will talk about later in the video will still draw a lot of aggro onto you. So if your playgroup is not at a slightly higher power level where other decks are also serious threats, then you might end up being Arch Enemy a lot. And without that resource denial, your deck might not be able to 3v1. Keep that in mind when you decide to play a deck like this. The other issue is with all of these cards that require parity breakers. If they affect everyone equally, the card's not super useful for you. It essentially does nothing. So you can kind of draw the wrong half of your deck where you draw some of your group slug pieces, but you don't run into many of the parity breakers and you end up just slowing yourself down as well. Monetarily, how much does it cost to build a group slug deck? Overall, the price is kind of in the middle. It's not a super pricey nor super cheap deck. There are a few cards that can be expensive because they're old and weird and really haven't been reprinted in a while. But also, some of the other random synergy cards are super cheap since they're not very popular in formats outside of Commander and not super popular in Commander. It can be a real mixed bag when it comes to price and sort of just depends on what you're building. Let's finish this video with a few examples. The new Ogier Axanil Deepest Might is a great option. You basically just crank up all the damage of your red punishing effects but since the buff to the damage is only dealt to your opponents, he breaks parity for all the symmetrical effects. Cards like Spell Shock, Sulfuric Vortex, and Mana Barbs can be devastating when they are cranked up to 4 damage a hit. And for you, you're not taking as much. Plus, the Ixalan Gods are really awesome since they have so much resilience, and dealing non-combat damage in this type of burny deck should be pretty easy, so you can flip Axanil back relatively easily. Let's say you don't want to play red though. You can go Orzhov with something like Kambal. This commander is the bane of Spellslinger and Artifact players everywhere. 
Plus, in these colors, you get to play all sorts of other taxing, damaging effects. Shieldred is a really great one to punish your opponents for drawing cards. Archivist of Ogma punishes your opponents for tutoring. These days, there are so many of these tax effects, you might already have a bunch of them just sitting in your binder. Also, nickel and diming your opponent for every little thing they do is very on brand for Orzov, so a bit of a flavor win right there. So that's Group Slug in a nutshell. This deck tries to slowly burn out your opponents by making it harder and harder for them to cast spells, or tap mana, or activate abilities. It's a very weird strategy that employs a lot of cards that don't work super well in 1v1 formats, but get much stronger with the multiplayer nature of Commander. I love seeing a lot of weird cards that don't see play outside of EDH get to shine, and that's probably why I love Group Slug. And I think, unlike Stacks, you can bring a Group Slug deck to a random shop, and if everybody is playing slightly stronger decks, your build will likely fit in. So let me know in the comments what your favorite Group Slug Commander is, if you play the archetype, and if you don't have a Group Slug deck, then hopefully I've inspired you to try one out. Thank you so very much for watching, subscribe for more.